that's an area I'd like to talk to you about in terms of your experience with SAPing, because that's what you're doing on a daily basis, right, yep. in your role of SAPing. It is the actual implementation. So, it, like, how do you find that those concepts from your book are translating to the real world? And, and where do you find that, you know, because you're dealing with people a lot, right, in, yep. in, in, in a real-world situation, the, the complexity is often around, uh, people and organizational st structure and bureaucracy and all the rest of it, right? So uh, tell us about the the experience there and where where I guess some of that sort of theory comes a little bit unstuck. Yeah, thankfully, uh, this book is actually reflective of of the real world work that both Rockman and I have done, uh, including my sapien work and and his work at a big bank. I think he mentions the bank. I think we're allowed to say Capital One. Uh, so it's definitely grounded in reality, but it's it's simplified a bit, right? So that it can be digestible as a book. And it doesn't have the context of a particular customer's, you know, technology and constraints. And like you said, I think that's where when you try to do this for real, uh, you need those those skills if you're doing it in a big enterprise. So if you're you're trying to introduce a microservices stack into a big company. Uh, our our experience is you need to establish a little bit of a greenfield approach. It's a lot it's a lot harder to do this in place in an existing application. It's much easier to do this if we say there's an aspect of the application or architecture that we want to pick off, and we're going to do that by almost like planting a seed in a new place, and we start building it there. And I've seen that done in a few ways. Some some banks have been more ambitious and they want to do it almost like a big bang, like, hey, we're going to rebuild the entire bank on the cloud mm. aspirationally, which requires a lot more of upfront design. And then other banks might be saying, there's a specific application, you know, the op costs are too high, it's too slow to change, and we need to improve that. And we want to do this microservices and cloud-based approach. So you can start to pick it off a little bit smaller. Uh, but either way, if you, you take the, the chapters of the book and you start going through them, um, what, what I find is it helps you come up with the right questions to ask. For example, when that, when that client or when your, your business tells you they want you to improve a, you know, an existing online application, a web-based application, and you start going down the microservices route, you know, don't forget about data. Don't forget about the operating model because you're probably going to have to change the way the team works as you move this thing over, right, into a, a new world. Uh, the, the other thing from, from real world is that businesses don't care that much about microservices, right? And we need to keep that in mind. Like, they know what they are nowadays. But if you think about it, what, what is the value to a business of breaking something big that you run as a tech organization into five things? Well, the answer is, okay, operating cost is lower, speed of change. Yeah, they care about those things. But one of the biggest shifts you have to make if you're an enterprise company is how do you, how do you make it so the technology team can do that optimization without justifying it every time to the business. Because what you really wanted to deliver to your business is, hey, you know, that app, we were able to deliver it in three months. Or we just improved the functionality like really quickly because we did some internal tech optimization and we made it all work. Uh, that turns out to be a bigger shift, right? Because then we need everyone to uh, establish trust. We need to remove the barriers to that trust. Uh, and that's bigger than microservices. Yeah, like you said, uh, that, that they don't really care about the implementation. They care about change. They require, they care about transformation, del delivering new products and services to customers and what the market wants, or they're even internal stakeholders like employees or business partners. Um, and, and if microservices is a way of implementing or providing that, then fine. <laughs> but equally, whilst five services as opposed to one may require may mean that uh, you can roll out those changes faster. It also means you've now got five times as many services to manage. It does. And so there's, there's, a, there's a cost as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely.